Right, here's a, here's a, uh, uh, this is a letter for another poet on one of the Arvon courses. Dear Bob, you think, you must think, having sent those two poems months ago, I've forgotten all about answering, but it's been a overloaded time, a move, my father's illness, overwork, a, a lot of correspondence simply neglected. Do you remember those two poems you sent? Getting by in America and underwater photography, or why we didn't go to the estate Bob, I enjoy these poems enormously. For one thing, I hear you, your own speaking voice all the way through, and I know that no matter how unusual the stuff you have to tell, it's all true. That's you. And then I remember how I put that suggestion of quatrains into your head, and here we are producing poems that just go talking their own way down the page, ignoring whatever rules there may be to quatrains and simply following their notes. The result is superb, you know. I don't mean that I think it's Shakespeare. I mean it's just a different sound, distinctively different from what normally gets written all the time. I mean this as a compliment. Now, if I were a magazine editor, which I'm not, I'd print them. So I do think you should send them to one of the magazines. And I haven't, you know, I've still not got anything printed. And that's big, so. First one, this is the first one I did in this style, Getting By in America. I put the down payment on, uh, on, uh, on a photo of a flowering artichoke with my unemployment check at Camera Works. To guarantee the rest of the $350, the gallery owner got me a job in his, uh, in his landlord's uh, flower shop on La Cienega, who made me his protege. I took typing lessons, wrote a poem for each customer, got the sack. I applied for a job I saw on the notice board at Santa Monica College as a driver for one of the pet boys, uh, Manny Mo and Jack. Doing my epileptic fit on the gong show, I won a year's supply of crazy foam, so I staged a performance in the parking lot at work. Mel Gross wouldn't say what Mo had said when he saw me. I bought a new carburetor and had my brakes lined there, and when the engine went on my Mustang, they, got advice, they advised me to go to this place where all the engines were in a field. I said this one, and had it fixed in down the road. Lost my carburetor in the process, and it got worse, so back in the field I said that one. It was worse still. So in my therapy group in Venice, I was told to write a poem being comprehensively negative about everything. It started, I sold my 66 Mustang to Melgrove's capitalist pig. I carried it round with me, then Sid said in the office that I'd never make a leading man or would have to be a character actor. Driving Bud home, I told him I felt like punching Sid in the face. Why is that, Robert, he asked. Murray said something about me being a good worker, which confused me. One time while I was driving him in his pink Cadillac. He told me about the vaudeville circuit in America and about coon shouting. He liked Jimmy Charanti and Al Jolson. We used to sing all the old songs as we drove along. After that, they'd shut up shop. They would sometimes see someone walking down the street. On would go the lights again. He pointed out how the billboard advertisements can only at most contain three ideas and can get by with two. He had favourite stop-off points, advised me to meet people to go to the Christian Science Reading Room in Beverly Hills. Bonnie bought in two sacks of uh, clothes for me her boyfriend didn't need, unannounced. Then Scott let me his car, which I used to take my portrait into the Lee Strasberg Theatre Institute, and they clapped it. Scott called me into his office to say they no longer needed me. A week later, Bonnie called me to say they'd read that poem of mine, which, as well as being pornographic, was anti-Semitic. Bud's wife, Sandy, had said I had a sense of wonderment about me and should try acting. Earlier, driving down Hollywood Boulevard, I admired a string bikini in a window, and Mary said uh, I should get it for myself. I had to exchange it for large. I did a sketch of myself in it, uh, cut it down, and the day I started the formal portrait, Mary took off. The daily ritual for a year was to shave my body hair and my front hairline, including eyebrows, and put on my body bronzer cowboy boots and live out the self-portrait. I used a laser gun to focus on my reflection, painted my dad's posture on, a plas- on, on the plasterboard, mixing Swarfiga with the uh, cheap oils, which gave a rich body uh, uh, to the glaze effect on the portraits. I got thrown out of Los Angeles Institute of Contemporary Art, screamed out at McDonald's. When I did some more bizarre accessories walking down the street, someone said, why not? At the Institute, I worked with Robert Viharo on Tennessee Williams' Camino Real in the actor's studio. In character, I did some anal dildo work with Don Quixote when uh, uh, Don Quixote stomped my legs after I threw dro- rotten tomatoes at his designer hair. So, now this is... I, don't, I wouldn't usually read this one, but... Uh, say that. Right, my family. The abortion. When I was at school, my brother Tom said he and Sue had decided to have an abortion. I said, great! and arranged an illegal operation. Clive Corner's mum and dad were on holiday, so we did it there. I had to get the codeine tablets from Sue from the cupboard next to where mum was doing the washing. 
We put the features on my scalp plate, then Tom threw it in the matchbox and waited it, threw it in the canal. A few weeks later, after failing his A-levels, he came home shouting. When he went to bite my dad in the neck while he was chewing noisily on an apple, the truth came out and he was admitted to mental hospital. In the car, the social worker asked him if he'd ever thought about suicide. I think I'd tell you if I had, he replied. He had to see the psychiatrist and had to explain how she'd failed him as a mother and mum. It was horrifying for her. Then Dad, you never said you cared or had the time to share the way you felt to show your feelings. Great beer blustering through the house, creating panic. A selfish, jealous man belching and farting. Even your sneezes appalled me. Your 80th birthday comes across this month. I remember the suffering. What goes on in your head with your perfect time, all timing? Always exactly the wrong thing at the right time, uncanny. You, have a, you had a possessive mother. You never admit you're wrong or even that it might be possible. What torment and havoc you've caused. TV patients and body noises. We joked on Mother's Day about your death. Underwater photography or why we didn't go to the Ice Stepford. On our trip around England, Wales and Scotland, Dad, as usual, made a study of the lavatories. When the car broke down and we were stranded in Llandidnod Wells, he managed to drop his camera down a lavatory. Today we got back on schedule and missed the walls. It was a beautiful day, the climax of the holiday. I have been constipated in contrast to Dad. There is no lock on this toilet, which is the one downstairs our host used, because other guests are using the other one. This reminds me of when I had the art show in Australia, when I had constipated diarrhoea for three months. You must excrete through your pores. It, in a and b in Balnagard, Dad discovered every time you stand in front of the lavatory, the extractor fan turns on. Mum noticed whether or not the breakfast had been microwave. The best house was in North Wales in Cadridris, and best food second at Brecon Beacon, third Dropshire, and best in the caravan in, in Mid Wales. An outstanding BS in S was here in Linda's farm. With me, it's been constipation. Just after stopping the car, leaving the Holy Island, I stepped in my dad's shit on Friday the 13th. It's interesting to see the lorry drivers turn their heads to the ditch at the side of the road. We, tri we drove fast Twyford down, earth rate, nearly home. J971 PLJ was the registration number of the driver who drove in front of my car and shoved his brakes in front of us when we entered the new forest. If Dad had not said, I think he's a policeman, as he approached us, I would have told him to fuck off. It was his abusive manner that was so offensive. Friday the 13th, in 6.45pm in the ornamental drive, just after the sharp turn to Burley by Rhineville House. It was so beautiful to come home to a tidy and clean house, Mum said. It's never happened to me before. Doris's welcoming letter and feelings make me so welcome coming home to the bungalow, just after the abusive treatment from the man we saw a stag with antlers by a bush just outside of Sway. Now that's one of them. Right here. That's Mum and Dad. Ooh, it's a stream. And that's Mum. And that's, this is the holiday. Mum and Dad in front of a Scottish lock. Mum hated the water in the locks. It was creepy. And there's one of Mum and Dad's good one. In a and b Oh boy, there they are. In the B&B. If you show me this camera. Oh, there, okay. Yeah. And that's the B&B one. Yeah. Right, next one. Let's see, oh, I've got to You've got plenty of time, I can do more than one. Yeah. I'll give you, this is Mum's favourite poem. This is uh, St John of the Cross. Shall I read it out? Yeah. For all the beauty life has got, I've never thrown myself away. For, save for one thing, I know not what, which lucky chance may bring my way. The savour of all finite joy in the long run amounts to this, to tire the appetite of bliss and find palate to destroy. So for life's sweetness, all the lot, I'll never throw myself away, but for one thing I know not what, which lucky chance will bring my way. The generous heart upon its quest will never falter, never slow, but pushes on and scorns to rest wherever it's most hard to go. It runs ahead and where is not, but upward hurls its fierce advance, for it enjoys I know not what, that is achieved by lucky chance. He that is growing full growth in the desire of God profound will find his table so changed around that of mere pleasure he is lost, like one who with the fever hot at food will only look askance, but crave for that he knows not what, which may be bought by lucky chance. Do not amaze yourself of this, the, pl the pleasure of earthly things that causes most from which most evil springs, and most the enemy of bliss. And so all creatures earth we got begin from it to turn their glance and seek among a thing I know not what, which may be one but lucky chance. For once the will has felt the head of the divine upon its set, it never ceases to demand divinity must pay the debt. 
But since its loveliness to scan, only true faith can steal a glance, it finds it out as best it can by risking on a lucky chance. With love of one so high elated, tell me if you would find him ha no harm, if the servants he created did not rival him for charm. Alone without face, form or feature, foothold or prop, you would advance to love the thing beyond all creatures, which may be won by lucky chance. Think not that the interior sprite, which of the vastly greater worth, can find among the joys of earth much for amusement or delight. This world of no beauty can advance, which is or ever was begot, to buy with that I know not what, which can be won by lucky chance. The man who strains for wealth and rank, employs more care and wastes more health, for riches that elude his stealth, than those he's hoarded in the bank. But I my fortune to advance, with lowly stoop, my lowly lot, over something I know not what, which may be found by lucky chance. For that which by the senses down here, for that which by the senses down here is comprehended, uh, comprehended as that good, and all that w can be understood, although it soars sublime and sheer. For all that beauty can enhance, I'll never lose my happy lot. Only for that which I know not what, which can be won by lucky of chance. That's translated by Roy Campbell. Now this is Frank, uh, framework crack. This is. Um, Again, Cotre, but it's um, all the modern composers I like, so this is modern composers. Consider now, no, no, making sound rotate around St. Mark's in Bromateo. I released it on Canby Island. When I consider Grisey and the way your sound comes out of me in those musical deaths, we were both Generation X. Hold me up, Miss M. How you accelerated sound uh, to form in that cupola in Westminster Cathedral with your very last composition. Teach me to do thy will, Stockhausen, not knock knocking on heaven's gate. The mummy with the gong helped the bass player. Your tam-tam in the German Institute helped me. Addendum, quicken me, O oh Lord, my soul died. What a relief. Maestro comb over, Pierre Boulez. But then Elliot Carter to the rescue with regret and perfection, love the uncertainty. Hold not thy peace, Muriel. You were manipulating my thoughts. I will praise thee as an archist. With my whole heart, your ecstasy and voodoo unite. Make a joyful noise, Hyman Bolivar, youth orchestra. Gustavo Dudamel, maestro Jose Antonio Abreu. Redefining social space. Depart from him, ye evil spirits, Schnitker and Kandinsky, your spiritual intercourse, desublimation and everything is them. How shall we sing in a strange land? With George Crumb, I went right out of it. Keep me from your snares, Trevor Wishart, releasing words from their meaning. It's a good thing missing Wolfram Rim for Perez. I lost my faith but found a new soul. Remove me from the way of lying. Jarosky evoked a demonic presence in Liszt's Faust symphony. Why do heathens rage? Fernahoe's framework crack. The misunderstandings are the f that misunderstandings are the fabric of creativity. Hear me when I call, Boulez. Your music is part of reality and is available for perceptions to unlock its mystery. Thou art my hiding place, Van Caro, sculpting sound. Your comlon is in purple performed in my theatre of song. Incline my heart with Arvo Part and Ivan Moody in church this morning. You spoke through my soul. Now this is one I wrote when I went on holiday with um, Miriam and her horrible friend. She came over from America. So this is uh, Hotel pa uh, Hotel Palladium. Nervy, the master of the put-down. Flying into Venice, waterborne in the hotel, the sun's in the lobby of painted layered paper torn back to let the sun through. Tom monologue in glass menagerie, tiny fragments of coloured glass like pieces of a shattered rainbow. For now days the world is lit by lightning. Picking up my video camera from Via Flora to Portofino and the Fiat and Miriam and Rosa I missed Gentili de Fabriano at the Uffizi and Giorgione, but saw Donatello and sang Stand By Me for Florence, as instructed by the attendant at Brancacci Chapel. And I remembered how Tom said he went to Australia to get away from Mum. And he wouldn't tell her I did, but she was pleased to know, as so much has opened up for him there. I'd return to the spot where I thought I'd lost my glasses. Here, halfway to St. Francis' Ero Meno della Concerti. I remembered Miriam seeing that in Tom in a photo when he last went back. His face was turning around. I'd dropped half of my fife out of my pocket after playing O Solo Mio, Bellari and Arvedetti Roma. Here, again, having come back, feeling them gone. Miriam broke her promise to go with me for this epiphany. When Rosa 
cuts Jerry's comb over, it won't grow back till it's grey. I'll never forget Peachy Assisi. Please put that into your epic poem. But in Rome, new things happen. Just the taste of gelati, chocolate in the bells of Roma. I hummed heart by Turin-born Rita Pavone in the foyer of Hotel Palladium, looking at my Piero book. We'll be gone and life goes on at the Palladium. Got my spoon in my hat, there's a pickle she died for in the fiery fate of Herculaneum and the breeze, ash, ah, the breeze. We talked about lots of things, whatever happened to lovely Swatkins. Before Miriam and Rosa walked to the car late night in Napoli to get the paperwork, Rosa took Miriam's ankle bracelet. Rosa has only ever been once accused of stealing. Tom says, to continue with Miriam, Tom says it's a good idea for me to retreat. Sorrento and Capri, l'isola dell'amore, with grapes and cheese on the counter in Corello da Fiore. P. Coming back, Rosa left, and uh, there she was. She, where was she? Took the Napoli boat. We remember the silly man in San Margarita Liguri who yodeled into his saxophone. This has been what I've been waiting for. News to come from inside. Uh, this is the last one. Desublimation. Tom Miller, Joy's half-brother, said how in the war in the Merchant Navy the bosun was strict but good, how a bully had confronted him and had put him in a deadly headlock. When he tapped to submit, he set him free, but warned him never to bully him again, picked him up head and foot and threw him on the bunk. As a follow-up, when there was a fierce storm, the bosun had been trapped foredeck between rope and capstan. The bully walked forward into the massive breaking waves, but on the seeing a second wave, Tom held back. It haunted him for the rest of his life how the bully had risked his, and he had held back. Alex's wedding at Buckinghamshire Railway Centre, going back and forth on the steam train, murinating libidos, floating free with the last great gush. I had waxed my, my, my moustache for the railway children's theme and borrowed a southwest trains tie from the prize-winging ex-play Ian for this bell do cousin Joy's in law. He had told me how he admired Dad because of the war, India and the Royal Engineers and the Chindits. So I told him my story about how Dad, how British troops were lining up behind his lorry to rape an Indian woman and he got his rifle out to turn on them. His uncle, Harry's first son, not in the family. When he put his hand on my shoulder, Mum noticed. I can write him to tell him how Dad raped her and my follow-up. He will be able to tell us, as my follow-up, he will be able to tell us on this epiphany. We could, thought we could do a sort of double nemesis here. 